Hey friends, Coach Shelby and Coach Christine welcoming you in and letting you know it's time for brunch, Quick Bites Edition, where you can grab your miles with a side of smiles and take them on the run midday, in the afternoon, or maybe even a late night snack attack. Let's have some fun to get you moving and grooving. Lace up those shoes, put a smile on your face, and let's log some miles. This is going to be a true quick bite edition. We're going to warm up this time. So let's go ahead and get that upper body moving and grooving. Let's do some arm circles, stretching your arms out alongside of you, rolling those shoulders and arms forward a few times, getting a good stretch, and then rolling them back the other way because we're going to engage those bad boys because they help us along. Get by with a little help from our friends. Then we're going to go ahead and end those arm circles and squat it out. Feet shoulder width apart, dropping it down, making sure that you feel all of that lower body engaging, relaxing at the same time and getting ready for some hard work. Let's go ahead and do another couple of those, making sure to put those pressures through your heels and not on your little tippy toes. And gonna end those moving right on into some lateral lunges. So feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart than you had before. And we're going to lunge to the left, come up back to center, lunge to the right. And we're going to repeat that for another couple seconds, alternating side to side. It's kind of like the cha-cha or the electric slide, but a little less fun. And, you know, we're all about the fun here, but we want to make sure our muscles are warmed up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and get our last few lunges in, and then we're going to shake it out, cueing in that Taylor Swift song that we all have stuck in our head every time we're told to shake it out. And let's move right in to our five-minute walking warm-up in three, two, and one. Coach Christine, I stole your thunder. I got them moving forward, but I you know, know, I figured we're quick. We gotta go. <laughs> I love it, Coach. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it this time. But friends, <laughs> hopefully you are feeling good out there. Coach, I'm excited about this particular quick bites because we are going to go ahead and lean into that feeling of sometimes having to get in those workouts and making the time fully maximized by having a little bit of a speed play, which is some of my favorite ways to get in my runs. And of course, friends, you know how we roll here. At any time, you use this for what you need. So if you're listening to Quick Bites and you are using this to get up and down those stairs, you're doing laundry or some household chores, that's perfect. If you're out getting your mail, checking your mail, awesome as well. Definitely no judgment, but we did structure a little bit of a fun workout today. Coach, do you want to get into our what people can expect while we're walking it out? Oh, yeah. And just like Coach Christine said, take these efforts and this mindset and apply it to whatever you are doing. If that means walking, running, jogging, skipping, whatever you're doing, we're going to do a three minute light jog at about a 30 to 40 percent of your effort here. And it's like your time to go out for a quick bite and you don't have to rush. You get to sit down. You get to have a drink of water and actually chew your food. <laughs> and then we're going to bring it into a two minute tempo phase, that 50 to 60, where you have some time, but you're going to be eating at your desk. It's going to be a little bit more rush, but you still get time to have a full meal and take a few breaths in between your bites. And then we're going to bring it on home. You know, you've been there before that one minute push where you basically get a power bar. I may or may not have done this in between <laughs> our meetings and courtings. I have my little power bar here and you just tear off a couple bites before your next meeting. But this is all going to be safe, quick and effective, which brings me to my biggest question. When you have that one minute push and you got to grab that bar before your next meeting, Christine, what are you grabbing? Okay. If it's a bar, because I actually do have a, a favorite bar, it's the perfect peanut butter and chocolate bar. 
I think that there's a theme that you're gonna learn about me and I feel like peanut butter and chocolate were just meant to be together. There's no reason oh, yeah. for them not to be like, they just perfect. So that's my go-to bar. They call it a protein bar. It's usually, mm, it's just delicious. It's really just a candy <laughs> bar. So let's let's own it for what it is. So that's usually my go-to. If I have a little bit more time to eat at my desk, I actually make a salad that takes me not kidding, probably 64 seconds to make. And it's because I take the little bit of the uh, prep work out of it and I'll pre-prep the actual cut lettuce vegetable portion parts up, throw in some sliced deli meat and 60 seconds of that uh, brown rice in the microwave and I'm good to go with a little bit of ginger dressing. Ginger dressing's my Ooh. favorite. So, Look at you having your life together, like pre-cutting shit. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, that, I'm not going to say that I haven't also used the Publix Deli because they've got some great salads that you could just grab <laughs> and then you're done and just throw in. I always throw carbs in with my salads. That's so just, I, I like carbs. So that's always going to happen for me. And I thought that those 60 second little microwavable brown rices or quinoas are always great to just throw some in. But They're still, a lifesaver. I know. What did we do without them? I cooked and actually yeah. had time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, friends, you're going to get to play with all those different paces in today's workout. And I'm super excited for it. So I hope that you guys can give it a try. Give us some feedback. Let us know if you want to see more of these or do you enjoy getting out for those quick bites and using it for an opportunity to walk, get away from your desk, whatever it is, we want to know how we can help serve you during these additions. Coach, I think we're getting ready to go into our first one. Three minutes of that conversation oh, going out for lunch. We're going. Okay. We're going. We're going out for lunch. We've got our menu in hand. The waiter or waitress is coming on by and about to take our order. What Ooh. you gonna have? <laughs> so we're gonna go friends in three two and one let's do it three minutes so when you get a chance to go out for lunch do you have a favorite place or do you enjoy actually making yourself food at home and sitting down at the table well I am more of an eat at home person because mm -hmm. I've found in all honesty that most of the food I get out quite frankly sucks Mm -hmm. because I, I'm one of those annoying people at restaurants to where I'm like, can I have this with a side of this? But I don't want that. Like I, and I apologize to the wait staff when it happens. Like I'm going to be that pain in the ass customer. Um, but we actually did not rehearse this just for the record, but I just went to a restaurant the other day that blew my ever loving mind. So I've talked before that I eat more plant-based and that's just what I've found works for me. And there's a local place that did an amazing job. They have all these plant-based dishes and ingredients. They make everything from like scratch. And you would have sworn that this should have been like a Michelin star place. It was amazeballs. What'd you have? I have, oh, well, we got a smorgasbord. We had, it's an Italian place and they had the meatballs with ricotta and their homemade sauce that the, we actually got to talk to the owner and he had the same recipe for a hundred years in his family. And then he had a Nashville hot chicken sandwich mm. and um, another one that was called uh, the kosher cowboy and it was just a fried quote unquote chicken sandwich with blue cheese and it had pickles and it was just oh my god I'm I'm salivating thinking about this right now why did we go down this path I'm actually getting hungry myself now as well <laughs> which is perfect though friends because you've got about 60 seconds before we're going to push up that pace a little bit taking it into more of a sentence pace or you had time to maybe grab that salad or that 60 second microwavable kind of brown rice but not necessarily quite as leisurely you're just going to test yourself a little bit. Now, well, in most days, do you mostly eat at your desk? Do you have just like this two minute tempo pace to, to hit and quit? You should you should have seen my face. Um, Gosh, friends, to be honest, I don't like eating at my desk, but I think that's all I've been doing lately. 
I can't so, imagine why. <laughs> This is like my life, this little box that I'm in right here right now. I think that yes, so that when I do get out for lunch, I do like to be more leisurely. And I actually like to eat in a way that it's kind of like European, where I don't, I get to just lean into taking my time. So friends though, we're gonna leave that taking our time behind. Let's push up into it in three, two, and one. Coach, tell me what you do when you need to start pushing at that pace. Do you go by effort? Do you look down at your watch? Or do you just kind of think about it in your mind? I would say in my current season, I definitely go more by feel. And I definitely pay a lot of attention to my breathing. I am naturally a very heavy breather. And I still have not perfected actually talking at my relaxed paces when I am running. I know you hear a lot about conversational pace and we've used it. I still have not found that cohesive Zen-like pacing. And even at this tempo pace where it's comfortable, but you're working, it's a work and lunch. I, um, I tended in my previous running cycles to really focus on pace but I've gotten away from it because it can vary so much day to day of what that, that arbitrary number, but you, you focus on a little bit of both, correct? Yeah, I do. I actually kind of always start with form. So I'm going to have folks do a quick form check, head to toe, make sure that you're being as efficient as possible, pulling in those arms closer to your torso, landing lightly underneath your feet kind of thing. So when I think of form that automatically puts my head in the right pacing kind of where I feel more uh, in control of it. I do occasionally have workouts that are structured where I pre-program my Garmin and it lets me know and it lets me beep so I'm not looking down at my watch the entire time. Um, It depends again, like you said, in the season. I do tend to think that especially here in Florida, especially if you're getting out in the middle of the day, those aren't necessarily the best ways to approach it. So that's where the effort scale definitely becomes very important. And friends, you've already gotten through these two minutes. This is it. 60 seconds to push the pace. Let's go in three, two, and one. What are your favorite form cues, coach, for that 60 second pickup? The biggest thing here is I want everybody to check their hands. When we start really powering through, we clench our fists like we are about to go to war and we're ready to pop somebody in the nose or what have you. So do me a favor, as you're pushing through, make that power come from your legs, release your hands. It's okay, I promise you, you're not gonna get any faster with your hands being balled up in little fists. That's very true. I do think so. But what's more hilarious for me specifically is seeing coach actually punch the air. (laughs) No punching the air, friends. Let's go ahead and shake out those hands a little bit. Keep them nice and relaxed. I say don't white knuckle. If you by any chance look down and you see that your knuckles are turning white, you're definitely clenching way too tight. I think you have a go-to. What do you hold? Like you envision a chip. Are you the chip person? Oh, I am not the chip person, but I have many a coaches who love those chips. But relax, everybody. That 60 seconds is done and gone. Let's bring it back down to that three-minute light jog. Again, you're back in that restaurant. You're waiting for your food. Maybe (laughs) scroll on the phone a little bit, and you're taking a big old breath. Maybe don't bring the big dragon energy here, right here, right now. That might get you a few looks in the restaurant. But it is effective as you're bringing your body back down and kind of just, again, that happy little area. Mm -hmm. You're good. You're fun. But Christine, I have to know, what's your favorite like restaurant, either meal or restaurant to go to when you have all that time in the world? Oh, my goodness. Uh, Gosh, that's a good one. I used to consider myself a really big foodie. I don't necessarily identify being a foodie as much anymore. But I used to, I agree with you, coach. I feel like food um, at restaurants hasn't been as incredible lately. Maybe that's why I love brunch because you really can't go wrong with it. So I tend to go out for (laughs) brunch a lot and I have a lot of local restaurants that I love. So we actually have a pretty big vegetarian scene up here. Do you have a pretty big vegan and vegetarian scene in your side of the world? We have the the ones that have gained more traction, but I wouldn't say that it's a 
wide variety, or at least if there is a wide variety, I am not familiar with them. Or if they are there, they're not that good to be talked about. (laughs) Okay, we have some incredible ones in in my area. So we've got quite a few of of vegan and vegetarian, or as some of them now call themselves, produce forward is kind of the new term that I've heard. It's probably an old term for hospitality, but it's new to me. But I'm not going to lie. I tend to go to Disney a lot. So I will usually grab food there, make a get out of the heat, especially in summer, and just go sit down somewhere and relax kind of like we would do in a three-minute conversation, get to chit-chat with my dining companions of choice or chit-chat with the waitresses, the waiters, the servers. I always feel like they have so much fun um, or they have so much great knowledge to bring as well. So I like how you say that you go to Disney like as a bad thing. I'm like, if I lived that close to Disney, I would be going there and I eating. I'd guilty. eat myself around the world. I feel Why? so guilty. I just, it's some, you know, it goes back to feeling so lucky about it because it was something that I didn't grow up being able to afford and now being able to do it while it's becoming increasingly expensive to go to Disney. It still is right? something where I feel very lucky to be able to do. So I think there's, there's a little bit of that. Yes. I can feel that. I do that with the beach because we are in Florida and we can go to the beach at any given time of the year, even when it's our quote unquote cold. I know. It it makes sense. I'm kind of mean come beach time. I usually post a lot of photos at the beach for all of our northerner friends, but that's because you guys are mean right this time of year. (laughs) You're telling (laughs) us it's fall. I'm like, it's not fall. But let's do it, friends. Let's push back into that eating at our desk pace in three, two, and one. I I use a lot of analogies for these, but it really, I do feel, helps visualize what you kind of should be feeling. Taking an everyday struggle that we all have of finding time for workouts, finding time Mm -hmm. to eat, you know, basic human necessities like breathing, and making sure that we give ourselves the tools when we're out on the run to kind of harness those feelings. And then I feel like In turn, it helps when you do have a crunch time for brunch or lunch or quick bites that you kind of find the comedy in it a little bit versus feeling like it's something bad or not so good. Which I think that's the perfect way of describing it at this very second is that friends, no matter what pace you're at, if you've decided that you're going to push into this more comfortably hard, which we're kind of lovingly tying into our quick bites with eating at your desk, it should still be fun. And sometimes having that little bit of levity and and just appreciating it for what it is, the really bad puns that we approach should help you with your form by starting off with the most important thing, that big smile on your face. (laughs) I have a big smile on my face, so it works. See, I think that's really the most important. And I know we've seen the elites do it time and time again, and we remark about it, but like if it's, if it works for, Kipchoge, if it works for Dina Castor, it's there's a reason to it. So lean into that big smile, friends. Smiling is really the key of everything. I'm a big believer, even when smiling is hard or is hard, it is definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. As I say this, and y'all are about to put in some work for this one minute push. Let's go ahead. Let the wheels fall off a little bit. You don't want to be sprinting here, but you want to be getting really close. Remember, your boss set this next meeting. You cannot be late. So let's go ahead and roll into that one minute push in three, two, and one. Let us go. So coach, that's funny that you say that because that's actually when I worked in corporate America, anytime that I had to interview for a gig, that's one of the first things that I let folks know from the get go was you have a lot of good strengths. Punctuality is not one of them. (laughs) (laughs) I don't care if the boss is going to be there. I'm likely still going to roll in a couple minutes late. Oh, see, I tell my husband that we need to be there at least 20 minutes before we actually need to be there. I'm assuming that's because he tends to have a little bit more of a fluid definition of time or is that just... Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, friends, you're staying fluid in your form and nice and strong. We've got 10 seconds. We're going to pull it back into our final segment, getting in this quick bites workout in three... Two, 
and one. Let's pull it back for three minutes and give yourself about 30 seconds here to get that big dragon energy where you feel more comfortable in your breathing and you feel a little stronger again. And you'll be amazed if you really take a minute here too while you're breathing and regaining your form. Look at what this feels like now compared to the very first round we did. You all automatically feel looser. You'll probably feel like you're taking lighter steps. And even though you're probably huffing and puffing quite a little bit, which is fine, it's normal. Take notice of what it felt like in the beginning versus now, because that's where growth happens. That's where you really figure out where your limits are where your pacing is and then that way when you do the next speed type of workout or even on your long run you learn so much about your comfort levels both in the comfort level and a little bit outside as well I love how we can take so many of these things that we discuss with our workouts into our regular daily lives and knowing that there's different times throughout the day, kind of at work or at home where we may feel a little comfortable and sometimes just having to be confident that we can be more comfortable if we put in the work. So keep moving, friends. You got 90 more seconds here before that next two minute block. Coach, tell me more about your all time favorite, where you would go for lunch. And oh, okay, wait, who would you want to be your, your lunch companion? For this three minute uh, block. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're killing me, Smalls. Maybe. Even though when you said tell me more, I thought about Greece. I'm like, tell me more. Tell there me more. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you get to have a guest for your lunch. Who are you inviting? Uh dead or alive. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever Okay, you gotta give me more parameters. Whatever than that. floats your boat. Water. Um <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say my first thought was my mom. She's she's with us still and she's my best friend. Like Aww. I I will always go to lunch with my mom. I she love just that. is she's the light of my life. Like my husband knows that my love for my mom knows no bounds and she just she's the best. We always have fun together. We cackle and we go on random tangents much like this. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a hard one to follow up. Coach what would you do? Shelby's mom, you know, what comes to mind when I think of food and I think of lunch and I think of dead or alive, it would probably be Anthony Bourdain. I had such Ooh. a huge over the top love for him. So friends in three, two, one, we're going to go into our next segment. You've got this. Unfortunately, we have to get back to the desk now. So let's get it. Let's get it moving and grooving. <laughs> so now Anthony Bourdain probably did not eat at his desk more often than not. I would assume. I, I so guess not. So where would he take you? Because I'm, I'm assuming he's going to pick the restaurant. A bar. Because actually it happened about a year before I started working with our local radio station. But our local radio station hosted him for a night out with Anthony Bourdain. And my understanding was that he was um, most at home for that evening portion, hanging out at the bar. <laughs> so I like that. I know, I'm assuming that's probably where he would go. We've got some really great like Michelin star rated uh, restaurants in our area. Orlando is actually much more of a foodie town than people give it credit for. But what I think I loved about Anthony Bourdain is that he didn't have to do fine dining. He was all mm-hmm. about like just enjoying the conversation at a hot dog cart. Like maybe you kind of have to do sometimes if you're more of a city person and you have to go and grab your lunch to have back at home. And a hot dog sounds really amazing right now. (laughs) I mean, hey, that would be a good analogy. Like you got to get to the hot dog stand so you can go back and eat at your desk. We can turn anything around to where it replies back to running. I mean, we should actually make that a whole segment. Like give us something and see if we can relate it back to running. (laughs) Or food is actually what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, like, either or. We're about food for sure. We have about 20 seconds before the very final 60 second. Coach, what words of advice would you give these rock stars? Let it go. In the words of Elsa, just let it all go. Feel it. This is the last big push. 
Give it what you got. You don't have to save the energy. So let's go in three, two, one. Hit that button, hit the gas, and let's get some extra movement in right here, right now. Absolutely. This is your time to shine, my friends. Food analogies out the door. Just own that power. Feel really strong here. So again, those shoulders are down and back. You're using those arms. You are fierce. I always visualize Des Linden in the 2018 Boston Marathon. Oh, I love her. That is my visualization. What's yours? I don't know that I use a specific human. I probably just actually think of words. And words that I think of are usually like fierce, strong, um, Staying light. I always think of light just so that I make sure that I'm focused. I also think about powering. And then I kind of envision kind of slicing through the air, like kind of just like a butter knife slicing through. So, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Again, bringing it back to food. <laughs> exactly. And we're going to bring it back to our cool down in three, two, and one. And friends, we're going to walk it out. Here, we're going to tell you to walk it out for about three minutes and 30 seconds, but you can choose to do what you need. If you want to hang out a little bit longer in a conversational pace, you want to hang out at that restaurant. We're not hating on it, but if you (laughs) do need to start bringing that heart rate down a little bit more and want to pull back into a walk, this is a perfect opportunity to do so. That's when you call it a business lunch, so you can just Mm. take a little bit longer. It doesn't matter what you talk about business-wise, just, again, we talk about food and running. Anything can be a business lunch if you really believe in yourself. Can we expense a Disney lunch? <laughs> Why not? Content, baby, content. Take a picture, <laughs> throw a selfie, make a reel. We can do oh, it. Oh, my goodness. Well, we've got a date, my friend. Coach, this has always been a lot of fun. I'm curious, do you have a fa- is this one of your favorite styles of getting in your speed, pushing the pace plays? Oh, yeah. I love these type of pickups because I am not a speed animal and I definitely am not a speed plus distance type of animal. And yes, I always think of a gazelle or a cheetah Mm -hmm. or some form of really fast animal that I can't think of at the moment. (laughs) But this is just enough to give me that little spurt. It makes me sweat. It makes me feel that speed. But I also think this is a great way to introduce speed work because it is a lot more approachable. Mm -hmm. Is this one of your favorites or are you more like a hold it and go? I I do like tempo workouts when I'm in that season of training for tempos. Um, So yeah, I do like this more sustained, but I actually, this is my favorite. For my ADHD brain, having a chance to play with the paces is absolutely the go-to because I also think it breaks it up so, so much the 30 minutes goes by in a flash. So I think, Coach, we've talked about how breaking it up and making it different, this is one of the ones that I would throw in if I felt like I was starting to get a little stagnant. If I was dreading a tempo run, I might move this into that slot so that I still get a little bit of speed play. I still get a little bit of that anaerobic threshold benefit without it feeling so over the top overwhelming. I love that you just brought in all the technical talk. It's like, talk technical to me, coach. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) Talk about food, talk about running, and throw in that that super knowledge drop. (laughs) Yes. I'm trying to also impress you, coach. Did it work? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you open your mouth and it impresses me. So I get it. Our our love knows no bounds. Well, I mean, we've connected over the two most important things that anybody can connect about, which is running and food. So... Friends, it's all about that connection, all about that conversation. And with that, knowing that you have about 30 more seconds here, or just a little bit longer than 30 seconds for us to bring this down into an end, it's always great that you give yourself that pat on the back. And then maybe since we're ending it with connection, shoot over a message to us at info at timeforbrunch.com. Let us know what you thought of this speed play, this little extra quick bite or just tell us how you're proud of yourself today i want both tell us how you like it and how you're proud of yourself because that makes the world go round well i think it's okay we could use our own hashtag right it's hashtag winning witness day since we've officially (laughs) (laughs) so we'd love to hear your wins reach out and connect with us you could also find us on instagram at time for brunch 
And friends, great job. Thank you so very much for joining in on this Quick Bites. We are going to ask you to go ahead and rehydrate and refuel, maybe with that power bar. Join us again with Time for Brunch Saturday Long Run Edition or come back for more of these midweek quick bites. And regardless of when or where, we're going to be serving up more miles with a side of smiles.